All right, viewers around the world, welcome to another Girl Gamer Talks happening right here in the world. This time's going to be the challenge to become a pro player. And we're going to introduce to you some amazing, talented players. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, all the way from Austria, she happens to be a League of Legends player since 2012, winning first place in Girl Gamer Lisbon 2018 and first female legends in DreamHack 2018. Please welcome with me, Tanya. <laughs> Loving the energy already. Great stuff. Well, hi, Tanya. How are you? Ah, I'm fine. What about you? Good, good. Thank you. Thank you for asking. All right. Now, from Austria, going all the way to France, who also happens to be a League of Legends player. First place in Girl Gamer Festival Madrid 2019 and Dubai 2020. Please welcome Laurel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, right, Laura. How are you? I'm fine, and you? Good, good. Feeling the energy, loving it. And now going all the <laughs> way to Russia. She happens to be a professional CSGO player, team captain, and has been an eight-time world champion and winner of Girl Gamer Festival in 2020. Please welcome Sonia from Russia. <laughs> Girls, you're awesome. You're beautiful inside and out, mind, body, and soul. Really appreciate you being with us here today in the talk. So, you know, there are a lot of challenges being a pro player. So let's start with the first topic. Community. That's always been the first thing to talk about, right? So let's start with you, Kisan. You've been talking a lot about community. So why is that a challenge? Well, um, in my opinion, it is a challenge because, <clears throat> you know, every girl who first starts to play any game she is facing with some pretty like high negativity from other players from other guys as soon as she starts talking in game uh, at least in CSGO we have the voice communications um, in matchmaking for example or like you know in any other different modes and in CSGO it's really important that uh, you communicate between your players in the team so you can you know like give information call whatever and um, very often i mean like 95 percent 97 percent of the times as soon as the girl starts talking uh guys start being really sexist you know towards uh, towards those girls either like sometimes it's kind of positive um you know not saying that everyone uh, being mean or hateful but uh, most of the times um, first like first reply every girl would receive or like oh we lost the girl in the team mm -hmm. uh, like why are you playing just go to the kitchen you know all this <laughs> oh, kind of stuff and yeah and it, it happens uh, very often and I'm not even talking about like um, just the beginning you know like me through the whole career that I've been playing more than I don't know 15 years already uh, I still see this kind of messages um, every time I play, every day. If I play with like random people, I would um, receive at least like two, three messages like this. And yeah, it's really, really hard. Yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot. Tanya, you got to say. I mean, I can say from, from my experience, um, I would say I'm more on the blessed side, I would say, because like my in-game name, which I play so lucky with, um, doesn't have like this this kind of girlish name. So usually I don't even get arrested in, in solo queue. But for example, when my team um, searches for scrims or even in the past, it happened a lot that like um, we book a scrim <clears throat> and the enemy uh, uh, starts to type as soon as we enter the lobby. Oh, hey, girls, how are you? Uvu. Uh, nice to meet you. Uh, can you follow me on Twitter, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. And it's mm. like at this point, I I already don't want to play anymore. And I'm like, ah, oh, can we can we not cancel the scrims? And it's like even so bad that uh, some of my teammates even after the scrims got like DMs on Twitter and stuff. So it's like, I don't know. It's oh yeah, like we really also horrible get this. To play. Yeah, we also get this. We have this uh, hot chick in our team, twenty, and uh, people like like a lot of times we play pranks against someone. Someone will tell tell her like, "Follow, I followed you on Instagram, twenty. Follow me back," and like just you know, like just write all these comments. Like, man, we are here to fucking practice. Just uh, sorry for my language. Just just play. Okay. 
yeah, just feels like that they don't take the prac seriously at all yeah. since minute one. And it's just so disturbing because we sit here and try to, to give our best to improve, to learn. And it just yeah. feels so bad to get afterwards even those messages and you you think like, oh, wow, they didn't take it serious. And now they make fun of us and like, oh, they, they ask for, for numbers or oh, you're like pretty hot for a decent league player or something. And it's like, bro, why? Yeah. There's always uh, this excuse as well when you like cancel or go, like there's no situation when you win because then like oh you have no humor or you have no like blah blah or you canceled you're just scared blah 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 like nah just I we just, didn't mean I it didn't like wake that. up yeah. today I didn't want like wake up this morning like hey I'm gonna go on the rift and get insulted because I was born a woman <laughs> it's not <Yeah>. fun <laughs> and I mean it's so hard sometimes to stand your ground as well and that's that makes it like sometimes even harder i feel like because you're even like judged for that which yeah. shouldn't be the case so yeah so when you fight back it's even worse i'm not, I'm not saying it's worse i'm saying it's like you never win there's no sit like they always have to say something they always like you it's just they're just annoying Ignoring yeah, because... people, like, there's always, they always say something. Sorry. <laughs> Go no, ahead. No, okay. just, okay. no oh, I just wanted to, to, to throw in because usually even if you complain afterwards and say, hey, this behavior is not okay, they're just like, ah, oh, I didn't mean it like that. Come on, don't be like that. It's just a joke and something. And they try to, to like, um, uh, how to say it, like, um, they just justify don't see their... yeah they justify mm -hmm. their behavior but they yeah. don't understand what it means for us on the receiving yeah. end right they don't know how we feel afterwards and that it's just like feels awful because we have to deal with this kind of stu stuff almost on a daily basis mm. Mm. yeah that uh, happens uh. like a lot so okay so this is simply horrible uh, me but now, before we can go to see what is happening to me, and nobody should be used to this. Nobody, right? So, for the time being, how are you handling it? Like, psychologically, mentally? Like, what are you doing? Do you just ignore? Do you build, like, a, a you know, a wall? Or do you, like, increase your mental focus? What do you do? Uh, I mean, no, personally, uh, I, I don't want to talk for the others, but I'm around for like a uh, decade now and playing games before before that even. And um, it's hard to say, but you kind of get used to it and it just sort of, it's just sort of like, uh, you know, it's not even like pissing me off anymore or anything. Just like, you just couldn't be bothered anymore. Yeah, <laughs> uh, okay. but I Good. just... Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, for now, for us, because we, we got this, like, I mean, on a positive note, I felt like it was worse, like, even five years ago, ten years ago. Now it's getting a little bit more normal, I'd say, to see girls in gaming in general. Um, yeah. So I'm just hoping that the next generation or the, the woman that starts now uh, don't have to face all these things that we had to deal with like a few years ago when i mean personally when i was younger obviously i was like more you know like scared of being judged and stuff like that no i just like yeah i don't even bother anymore that much i just block or just yeah you grow your thick a bit like your skin a bit like thick but yeah, people that are younger and just want to have fun and stuff, it can totally ruin them and it like it gets like a lot of time to really understand like how to deal with it in your in your brain and your mental and the whole yeah, how to deal with it in general. I don't really know how <laughs> to explain but um how to like be like oh, this doesn't affect me as a person like it's not it should not like affect me. It should not uh, decrease my value as a person, as a player. It should not decrease my yeah. fun and stuff. But it kind of does. Uh, it's just hard to deal with me, like 16, 17, you know, and you're just like around and you're dealing with like all of this things already around. So, yeah, I kind of got lost in my thought. <laughs> Sorry. No, bless you. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> Tell yeah, me what you got to say. Right. 
Um, <clears throat> I can just say, um, when I started, I, I, I really took it to heart because we got flamed a lot because when I remember my first team announcement, um, we got sponsored by um, Team YP, um, which the main sponsor was Uporn, and it blew up on Reddit. You cannot even imagine. We were Reddit front page with over 2,500 comments. And I still remember that night where I was laying with my laptop in my bed and I was just 18, I think, I believe, 18 or 19. And I was um, laying in my bed with my laptop and reading every single comment. And I, I was just <laughs> crying because like, this was kind of all new yeah. to me because it was my first team announcement. And I couldn't understand why are they hating us so much? Who do we harm with this team announcement, right? We, we're just five girls. We just want to compete. Why does it bother everyone so much? And I, and I remember I wrote a really, really long answer with my Reddit account. And this one blew up as well. And like on every new site, there was my comment, oh, this player is saying this and that. And since then, I just kind of learned how to deal with it that I just like uh, whatever I, I won't read any comments anymore because like I'm not interested what anybody has to say right because like if they pull me down they can't pull me down because I won't read it right so it's sad to say but you you gotta learn with time how to how to deal with everything and just like ah uh, yeah whatever I mean you read you still read somewhere the comments or I don't know someone is linking it to you or did you read that comment what do you say about that etc but you just read it and you're like, ah, whatever, one one more. And then, I don't know, after 10 seconds, I'm just like, ah, whatever. I, I don't care anymore. But it's sad to say that it uh, has to, to to come that that every girl on the esports scene or in general in the internet has to grow such a thick skin just to deal with, with all the criticism and the hate. So, yeah. Um, I have um, really like strong temper, you know? Like I, um, I, I'm really a fair person. At least I think of myself like this. And um, when I see something unfair happening to others or to myself, I always try to fight it. You know, at least like my I'm 29 years old already, so like I'm pretty mature right now. You know, but before, like when I started playing, like 16, 17 years old uh, I was like you know I was just always fighting I was like as soon as I saw something bad I would answer that as soon as uh, you know someone would write me or some someone would write like to some even like even now you know like if someone will write I, I don't even care now that much uh, when someone writes something bad to me but I always care if, if this person would write some something to the player I'm playing with like to my teammate you know like even to my friend that does, doesn't need to be a person from my team like if if they would write them something bad, I would always like try to, you know, like defend this person, even though like I understand, like, what's the point? Like, there's literally no point, you know, to to reply to hateful comments, because basically, like, the reason why people are writing all these bad comments is because they are um, looking for energy, you know, and um, yeah. when we are replying to them, we are giving them this energy that they're looking for and the more we reply and the worse we like the worst things we tell them the happier basically they become because this is what they're looking for and you know i try different tactics i try to like reply with uh, some bad speech i try to mm. i try to kill them with kindness i try oh, wow. to kill them with humor you know just like laugh this thing out but you know, like all of this at the end, it gives like basically um, nothing because like these people are just like this and I cannot change this. Maybe something else would happen in their lives that will change it, that would change their, you know, like you on the in this or like on this world on other people's, you know, what they say to other people, basically. But um, yeah, I came to conclusion that the it's of course it's better not to say anything you know like to just ignore it basically not to let it get into your skin because as soon like as soon as you let yourself to reply to something bad you're basically letting them under your skin right so it's better to just you know like girls say said have this um, st still skin and just like don't care mm. and it's so exhausting as well to answer yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. I don't have time for this like anymore. 
exactly. <laughs> Even if I'm unemployed right now and I have all the time in the world, I still don't have time for it. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just uh, wasted time. That's the yeah. It's just wasted time. Waste of time, waste of energy. True. You, you yep. know, girls, in every talk, every panel uh, that we bring up when it comes to esports and girls, this topic always always, always, always it comes up all the time yeah yeah oh, because it's still a big issue right yeah and and everyone like faced it at some point like every girl faced it or even every every guy like no girl that had this experience as well it's, yeah yeah, the problem, like, why why it always being brought up is because, like, uh, this kind of um, talks from other people, it stops girls from, you know, bringing, like, bringing their time into something, like, bigger, like, into becoming a professional player because, like, they just stop playing because of all this hate, you know? Like, uh, for example, um, I started playing. I was always playing with my friends. I was always, like, you know, I was always surrounded by people who respect me, who uh, are friends to me, and I know this, and I always felt this. But imagine those, like, uh, people... I'm not even talking now about the girls, right? I'm talking, like, about the boys as well, like, who just started playing, and, like, they make a mistake in game, and uh, their teammate would, like, uh, you know, write some th something bad because of, like, this guy just made... And, you know, like, it's not, like, something bad. They're writing horrible things. They're horrible things about their mothers, about their health, like, you know, like, they're yeah. wishing bad things on them. And, like, how... Who are you to, like, to, to say something like this? I don't understand this. And, of course, like, this kind of, like, messages, they... At some point, for some people who don't have this steel skin, they will just stop playing because like they can't be bothered to like why would why would I spend time reading all these messages, hearing all these messages? All I want is to have fun. I want to enjoy the game, and maybe if I will be better, I will be like I will become something in this uh, game. It always like makes me so mad every time I see like anyone commenting on twitter or, or whatever like why is there no girl in lec it's the league of legends like championships and like it's time to like that they come here they always find excuses like why are they not girl they're just so bad blah blah blah. it's just no like the, the answer is like simple like it's exhausting no no girl wants to be the first there like it's will be so i mean Honestly, I'm wondering if it's like even worse it for like the amount of efforts you have to put in and you have to sacrifice like your entire uh, mental health because it's like already mm. really hard on guys. Like they're not just like, yeah, they don't have any, like, it's not like they don't have any issues as well, but like to be a pioneer, I think, and to be the first girl there, thrown there with no like first experience, I mean, it was like Remilia in LCS and stuff, but it like didn't really. It was not a good really experience for her. Um, like, you're gonna be judged all the time. You're gonna be watched all the time. Every move you're gonna make, you're gonna be like they're gonna be post about it. If you win, there's gonna be people like questioning it. You're gonna have to like prove yourself even more and constantly and constantly just because. Uh, you're a girl which is like kind of unfair and even if you're like really good and you worked a lot to get uh where you are it's just never ends like i feel i feel like honestly if anyone does that i respect them a lot because it must like it I, in my opinion it will be extremely exhausting mentally i mean good that you brought like um, remilia as an example um because mm. like I don't know if, if anyone can remember, but like whenever she was playing in the in the short period of time she was playing because like I think after three or four weeks, um, maybe I'm wrong there, she quit actually because of all this stuff. Like look even yeah. in the Twitch chat, the Twitch chat was full of like bad and hateful comments every time she was playing. And I, I didn't look at the at the Twitter posts or something from, from her org or something, but I can like really imagine well what, what people would comment under under um, a post when they were losing or something or even when they're winning probably they would write something oh she got carried and etc it's just yeah. like it's just not worth i think it's just not yeah. worth to 
to try at the moment as a female to to reach this this highest level because you you sacrifice so much of your mental health probably that at least in my opinion it wouldn't be worth but because why would i do that why would i would i get flamed every single day and like not even only in the in the female scene but like obviously the lc the, the lcs even probably counter strike has so much um bigger communities with so much mm -hmm. more reach like why would i do that it's like i would just like have eventually a mental breakdown yeah wow. I, I can't blame any girl for not wanting this or for wanting it but not it's like fear of success sort of like i understand i mean i completely understand now like why there's still no one there because it's just yeah i mean it's crazy. The fear of success. You just said that right now. And, man, man. <laughs> it's like, as we wanted to talk about the challenges, but apparently this challenge alone is the biggest challenge of, you know, the fact is you want to be professional in the game that you chose, whether it's CSGO, Overwatch, League of Legends. But before to go into the technicality of the game, how much you would practice, hours, what's the, you know, what's the ins and outs you're facing, a side challenge is as big but bigger than the game itself of becoming a pro player so i mean i don't want to uh, like go to another topic but let's just say the community thing is so big right now and uh it's i wouldn't say it will never end but hopefully it will like you know it will have to be resolved somehow i've seen a lot of platforms whether it's twitch and other platforms who are trying their best to you know put a cap and limit to the hate talk and toxicity of the communities but it's not enough, right? I mean, still, you're being hit. I mean, as your focus to become this pro player uh, in your field and putting more hours and hours into, you know, crafting or mastering your craft of the game itself, you have to face this daily basis. And I think maybe in a few years, the girl's going to write a book about it, like how, you know, how to face the community. And that's going to be a thing. That's going to be totally a thing. Now, beside the community thing, and being a professional pro player. Um, do you think there is a different mindset between being a girl gamer or a guy gamer when it comes to professional game inside the community? Or is it or like when it comes to, when you put the community away, is it the same mindset, same technicalities, or there's a different challenge going? Well, I don't know about that. Like, I can only talk about my team, you know? I can't talk about... But other teams, other games, uh, I don't know much uh, about other games, to be honest, but like, mm. if we talk about Counter-Strike, um, the mindset that we have as a team, I think it's uh, very similar to any professional uh, male team. Okay. Uh, we have the same, you know, like work routine, work ethics, um, we work together as a team, we work um, individually sorry this word man <laughs> always individually <laughs> no, you, you got it you got it <laughs> thank you uh you know like uh, on our skill um we practice five days a week uh, five six hours uh, we have a coach we have a manager we have like a team behind us who is supporting us uh the way we uh, play, like we do, the way we practice uh, is basically like the same because like my boyfriend is a professional CSGO player and I know how they practice as a team. And uh, we have the, the only difference is the um, schedule because, um, for example, the top tier CSGO teams, they start practicing very early, uh, like 11, 12, uh, you know, and uh, we at our tire, we can't find uh, the same uh, the same practice basically but we can't find practices mm. because for example they're practicing against top tier teams and they are doing yeah. this because they are uh playing and they're earning money you know they're like this is their profession this is their job uh, but uh, at our tire uh people uh, from some other teams they're working so they have to play later you know so this is like the only difference right. that we just start like different times but rather than that uh, it's uh basically the same like the, we want to be the best we want to achieve more uh we want to be better tomorrow than today that's why like we're trying to do everything for this like we're watching demos we're watching other games we're discussing our mistakes uh we are bringing new tactics new strategies uh we're working on our mental um like uh, attitude you know how to you know like 
how to go through official important games you know like when it's for example it's mm -hmm. finals how to win it because uh, in the finals it's uh, you know it's about uh, how strong you are mentally how how much you want to win it you know how confident you are in the end and uh, yeah this all matters and we work on all the many different things okay okay nicely put um tanya and lore just big legends i mean oh you can yeah. Rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, <that's> sure. <laughs> no, I mean, um, at least from my perspective, I can agree everything what she said with the difference um, that my team is, is not a full-time team. So everybody of, of my team members is either studying or working. So um, it's, it's maybe then a bit different because it's not the main focus of everyone because like of course, like everybody is like um, their main focus is either their studying or or, or, or the work. Right. Um, but but besides that, um, everybody is is trying to put the same efforts, I guess, like improving individual skill, coming uh, coming ready um, to the to the scrims or to the team practice, etc. Um, uh, trying to to figure out new strategies um, with the coaches, etc. But yeah, as I said, it's a bit different when you're like not not full committing um, to a team. So so it's a okay. bit yeah, it's a bit harder, I would say, because like you can't fully 100% um, focus only on League of Legends, and you can you can only give it 100% in your free time, which is obviously really rare when you have like a full time job or you you preparing for your exams. Oh, uh, this uh, Lore? Uh, I ag I agree on. Yeah, I guess basically everything in terms of, yeah, mental, mentally, uh, mentality, sorry. Uh, with guys, I, I don't know for, I don't know, talking to, yeah, people I know that are playing semi-professionally or professionally. Uh, there's like the same, I mean, game related and, and team related is like the same issues, the same thing they are working on or they are like facing, you know, like when the screams doesn't go too well and how do you get like through this or as uh, Senya? Yes. Is, yeah. Sorry. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. What, I don't know what to butcher your name. <laughs> it's very good. Uh, so uh, me. <laughs> uh, the finals and everything, uh, like how to deal with competition as a as a tournament um i didn't see really any difference on this part like all the girls i know i mean no one wants to be a loser right like everyone wants to win everyone wants to be better i guess <laughs> um but everyone at his choosing competition is kind of you need to have this like kind of will at least to to win and then yeah to yeah to smash people basically <laughs> and i don't see much different for that uh, so yeah okay so with all i'm hearing right now I mean, uh, which made me think of another question found being a pro player do you think that even though a lot of players they would enter esports and they would decide to do it professionally because you know passion and the lifestyle and all that but how was the rewards of being a professional pro player i mean a lot of professional uh, players different games or different let's say fields when it comes to sports regular sports because it's out there there is tournaments there's a lot of things they get salaries by the government or by the teams but when it comes to esports it's a different ball game altogether so being a pro player in esports, can I say one of the challenges is that sometimes you would have to wait for a long time to get rewarded? Would that be the case? What do you think, Sam? Yeah, for yeah, sure. Definitely. Yeah. It, it's a lot of work and efforts into something that is not, you're not sure you're going to get a reward. You're not sure you're going to get like anywhere, really. It, it's hard to go there, especially as you grow older. Uh, because at some point, well, you're not 16 anymore. You have to pay the bills and stuff, and right. and then you're if this doesn't go anywhere, it's kind of hard as well to bounce back and to 
yeah, really cut ties with it or to decide when to stop, when to not stop. Because maybe sometimes like it comes, um, you don't know. It's very blurry. It's very uncertain. Yeah, I think you need to be, uh, um, in order to get to, into the professional top Thai team, uh, like, I mean, scene overall, well, you need to be, first of all, good in this game. <laughs> Second right. of all, you need to be hardworking. And third, you need to be lucky because, um, you know, sometimes like it, it, it's the, but like, you know, like if, if you're good in this game and you're hardworking and not lucky, let's say you will still get there, but it will just take you longer, you know, before people will notice you before people like, you know, contact you. Uh, but um, we see many examples of like very young people. Uh, players like 14 years old 16 years old getting into this you know uh, big organizations uh, getting like i don't know like thousands of your salary you know like there are these kind of examples and uh, these guys obviously are good but you know to be able you know like i don't i don't know what to say to be honest like i already fucking said so many time things i, I got confused <laughs> myself you're good well, basically, what I was trying to say is that um, just be hardworking, you know, and not give up. Because, like, uh, not giving up is, the, I guess, I think it's the most important thing, to be honest. Mm. And and staying um, self disciplined as well. Yeah. Uh, something I was really struggling with <laughs> personally, because um, motivation comes and go, but yeah, exactly. If you lose the, the habits, if you fuck up your schedule uh it's really it's really easy to um get uh, into the tilt you know yeah in, in to spiral yeah, so exactly. yeah it's especially a bit scary when like um your hobby or you the the thing you do to to escape from something i would say because right. which are, are mostly video games are um escaping from from the real life from your problems um becomes your job it's um that's something i struggled a lot with back then when i started um what do you do for fun then right because like <laughs> your your game is now now your job and then then yeah. suddenly something switches in your head and the game you 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 used to play for fun and you put so mm. many hours into it is, is suddenly your right. job and suddenly you're like Today, 7 p.m. <laughs> I have to play, but I don't want to play. But you have to play, and this this is such a such a such a really hard point in in terms of of to motivate yourself because it's like it's so hard when the the thing which you do for fun and for your hobby becomes your job, and that's something I struggled a lot with, where I started to become a lot more unmotivated, I'd say, and like. Oh, I don't want to play League of Legends. Ah, uh, I I start to play CS:GO for for fun now, or Rocket League, or whatever. Ah, uh, League of Legends. Ah, uh, I have training. Ah, uh, I I really don't want right. So it's like really really hard to to balance it again, right? It I relate a little bit too much to this as well. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> it's it be so hard. It's like uh. these days when you just don't really want to play, but you're like, oh, I have. That the screams didn't go too well. I still have to do like this and this, and I'm still getting paid for it. And and then you saw like, I mean, in my case, I had like this little imposter imposter syndrome. Sorry, when you like try to compensate a bit, but it just snowballed into getting like worse into the tilt. Uh, it's really hard to um um I don't forgot the expression, but you lose like grip on yeah. what's like From reality grip on sort of yeah. yes mm -hmm. and you get like because as um tanya said it's like you really need to uh cultivate as well all those things outside and and i had the same thing where i was like just waking up playing league and i will just go back to to bed when i was basically like collapsing and i i didn't really do anything outside of it and i just like kind of burned out at some point it was too much and I was like plateauing really hard as well because of it and it's but it's really hard to fall into this hole because it's like you still need to stay uh it's competition you need to stay like performance but it's really easy to like overdo it 
Yeah, but this is why, like, we need to keep the self-discipline, like you were talking about yeah. it in the very beginning, you know, because, for example, for me, let's say, uh, if I if I look at myself, like, three, four years ago, um, I, I felt the same like you feel sometimes now, you know, like, uh, not not wanting to go to the practice, like, you know, I, oh, I like, we practice you so much so like you know like five days a week uh, like sometimes like seven or eight hours uh besides the team practices who like i play a lot um, outside the practices you know with my friends and let's say but like then i was just uh, you know thinking about all of this and like i'm thinking like I am doing this for a living. This is my job, and I cannot afford to have this kind of mentality that this game, uh, you know, it's not like it tiring me. Of course, it does tiring. Of course, I'm getting tired, uh, but it's like it. I can't afford this game to wait to be boring for me. You know, like I I chose this game, and um, I keep on going. And if I want to like achieve everything that i want in this game i need to change this mentality completely so i think i i managed to kind of achieve it in terms of like mentality you know like when i come to when i pra finish the practice i'm sad that i finished the practice when i wake up in the morning i'm thinking oh my god i can't wait to start maybe it's because it's coronavirus and there's nothing else to do now <laughs> <laughs> but i'm so happy now that we have frax you know like i'm just Oh, like I'm just looking at the clock. I'm like, oh, I want to play. I want to play. And then, and then we play. We lose. I get angry. We argue or something. And then, you know, like next day I'm again like, oh, practice, practice, practice. And I don't know. Uh, I guess it's just different for people. You know, I think this is the, sorry. I think this is like this is this is how it should be. Like this is in the perfect world. But I guess like this is how it should be. The uh, you do what you love and you want to do it every day of your life, even though like of course it's not possible. But this is what we need to like you know kind of be looking for and trying to achieve. Beautiful. That's beautiful. <laughs> As I've been hearing about all the uh, how you felt about the game. And how it feels that sometimes the one thing was your escape became your work. Now, as a pro player, I guess I'm just like, you know, thinking of what are the things you want to see as a pro player. Um, recognition, to be acknowledged, uh, to be at the top of your game, um, to be rewarded financially and all that kind of stuff. Have you ever thought sometimes you're not achieving what you want to achieve because the game you're playing is challenging by itself? The game, the platform itself, like, you know, whether it's League, League of Legends, CSGO, Fortnite, PUBG. Like, have you ever thought that, oh, I'm not reaching where I'm reaching because not because I'm not a hardworking person or not smart or not talented. It's because the game itself, the platform is not, you know, is not friendly. And then you thought of changing to another game. Did that ever happen to you? Let's start with Tanya. I actually never had the thought to to quit uh, to quit League of Legends just because of the community or, or something like that. Because as I mentioned, like I don't really have a, a girlish name, so usually I don't when I play solo queue, I don't get harassed for for being a girl. You know, I just get flamed when I play bad. But then I guess <laughs> the flame is kind of justified. So I actually never thought about it to to quit before of that because guess I'm, I'm i'm lucky that i i didn't choose uh like an obvious name which shouldn't normally be a problem right but yeah i guess okay, it still that's, is that's that's pretty cool pretty cool lore um no i cannot have the same uh thing with the names my name is just uh just random numbers whatever <laughs> um but um no, I mean, I had really good memories in this game and a lot of fun as well. And I met like through, through it, not uh, especially in it, but through it because I got a job there and, and events and stuff. I met like uh, people that I can call my best friends now. And, and that's really like, it's for a set, you know, the toxic community, you, you get over it now and uh for the rest no i don't think it's i think honestly anyone can really shine in this game uh i'm not gonna say it's easy but i think it's uh it's doable yeah so okay. i can only blame myself if i don't like 
get to my goals. Yeah. Okay. Pretty interesting. <clears throat> Good attitude. Ksenia, what do you have to say? Uh, about switching to another game, if I ever had the... Well, have ever thought, you know, oh, I'm not reaching my goals, not because me, because the game itself, because the company, the publisher, the community, oh, no. it's because <laughs> of the platform itself, not because of me. Have you ever thought of changing to another game because you felt, you felt it's not you anymore, it's really the game? No, no way. Well, there are, may, <laughs> there are so many other examples of the guys, who, uh, people who achieved a lot of things in this game. So it's definitely not the game's fault that I'm not a major winner yet. But it's my fault. And um, yeah, I'm still working on it. I'm still working on achieving my goals, you know, and uh, no way I'm switching to like another game or giving up till I achieve them. Girls, <laughs> keep the attitude up. This is fire. I mean, I mean, I just want to clap for you all. Honestly, you, you, you're, you're amazing. You're amazing. <laughs> for real. Now, as we spoke about the financial part, the game, the community, let me hear your thoughts. Let's say if each one of your girls will give me that one challenge, if it's out of your path, if, if that obstacle is away from your path of becoming the who you want to be, what would that challenge be? Ksenia. I need to think about it challenge that i faced during my career like a challenge that you know if that's out of the picture things will be way easy whether it is it financial is it again the community what is that one challenge you think that if i'm if that challenge not there anymore that's it it's gonna be a smooth sail okay i'm thinking Okay, no props, no props. Any of your girls would like to answer I mean, if you know I the can, answer? I can already say that for me, especially, it would be um, definitely the financial part. Because as I mentioned mm. before, like, um, I never had this, uh, I would say, luck um, to to get into a team for a full-time salary. So I always had um, in my pre previous teams only uh, a part-time salary, which is already lucky. Don't, don't get me wrong, right? Because like getting paid already for, for playing video games is already... Um, I'm really nice, but still, like, I'm, I'm 25 years old. I need to pay my rent. I need to pay my bills. I need to pay my food, et cetera. So um, I, I never really had the, the feeling I could 100% go all in on League of Legends because I still need to work, right? Because I need to still right. um, go 40 hours per week to, um, for a normal job to earn my money, to pay my bills, to pay everything I need, right? So I would say for me, it's definitely the, the financial part. So you're saying that if you get paid well, that's it. That's going to be like you're going to be flying faster in your career. I mean, I would guess so. I mean, obviously, I can't um, I can't know it, right? Because like, I don't know what's going to happen if I get into a team like which uh, which pays me a full time salary. But this is at the moment my biggest obstacles because um, I come home um, from um, from work at 6 p.m. Um, and usually when I have scrims during week, um, which is already two, three times, we start at 7 p.m. So I have like um, not even one hour to get ready for scrims, get into the team speak, log in. Um, I don't even have time anymore for warm up games before scrims, right? Because I come right after work, right? And afterwards, like we usually play three games um, and it takes usually until 10 p.m., 10.30 p.m. And after that, I'm just tired, right? So I go sleep right. and I just repeat that. And even, even on the days we don't have scrims, I'm like, this is my only day in the in the week where I can just chill and I don't have to play League of Legends. So usually on days, those days, I don't play League at all, right? Because I just need some kind of break because like I'm, I'm still exhausted from work, right? So I usually can only play um, and improve my own skill on the weekends. So yeah, it's, 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 it's really hard when you when you can't commit 100% on, on League of Legends because you, you have to get to, you have to earn some money, right? Right. Wow, it, the hustle is real, right? Hustle wow. is real. Uh, yeah, I know this feeling. I, I used to be, I used to have this challenge before when I was working, and I was, uh, it was the same. Wake up seven seven a.m. at home at eight p.m. Start pra uh, practice at eight p.m. <laughs> so I don't have, I didn't have any time. So okay, I was just, I took off my jacket. I said, I'm like. 
I would ask my, you know, like my mom or like, can you, can you bring me something to eat? Then between like <laughs> talking, I would go wash my hands, change my clothes, you know, like it was, it was horrible. I remember this time. So it was, I was exhausted as well. Yeah. Uh, it's really, it's like female gaming, uh, it, it barely has money. Uh, and um, I'm among the lucky people who, you know, who being paid uh, and I can do it full time and I'm like endlessly grateful for this so yeah <clears throat> about the challenges uh, my personal challenges I think um, I was thinking to be honest like it's really hard to you know like like I said um, I'm kind of like everything is given to me right now in terms of like support and I can just focus on it but if I you know go below uh, above the mind borders I guess um, one of them can be uh, this um, hateful speech that, you know, like before, because like I said before, I was also you get, like getting, bringing this all really close to my heart. And it's just very hard to, you know, because like my end goal of my career is that I want to be playing the same level as professional male players. I don't want to have this, you know, how you say this? differences between female and male gaming i want it all to be like i want to prove that the girls can play the same and we right. can be on the high level and all of this so this is like the end goal and um of course like i want to achieve this so i'm trying to do everything for this but like i said before like all this hateful speech i remember myself you know like i was playing in the high uh, league uh, with guys and every game every game i'd play i was I, I felt i was being judged and because of it like you know because of this like small comments small like messages like all of this i couldn't think of my own game you know i was so focused on what others would think of me what others would say what i do not right now that i was like i was just playing bad because of it not because like i was playing bad because i didn't have skill uh but because i was overthinking it you know because i, I, le I was letting it to get into my head basically um now like I'm like i'm taking less to my heart and now like i'm, I'm really really experienced obviously I'm, now I'm just focusing on my own game, you know, and like, fuck the haters, basically. But before it was like one of the big things. And the second challenge, of course, is that um, CSGO is a team game. Like, LOL is a team game. And right. for example, I have this kind of goals, right? I have like my own goals. I want to achieve like big things um, as a female content, uh, like as a female player, you know. And uh, I have four other teammates with me who might, you know, not have as much motivation as I do, who might, like, not have as much will, who, you know, like, they, ju they just have different goals, basically, like, different from my goals. For example, for them, they want to, like, achieve something else, something, like, not the same as I do. And this is just, this makes sometimes things harder because, like, I have to basically push others not only myself but i also have to push others in my team to work more to you know to like <sighs> be more consistent to like watch more games to you know like discuss more things to play more hours outside the practices even though like they don't have to right because they're being paid for playing like practices with the team but in order to achieve like this kind of goals that I have at least in my head, I'm not saying that others don't have in my team, right? But maybe some don't, right? I can't, I don't know what is in their heads. Right. But I know that to in, in order to achieve these goals, I need to be working twice more than I'm working right now. Like not only practicing with the team, I need to play much more individually. I need to play like aim. I need to play like movements, you know, like do the movements. I need to play like uh, with my friends. I would say like, it's like 10 hours per day. In this, in, in this case, I think that we might like really achieve something as a team, but will others do this? I don't think so. Unless we all are in the same, uh, you know, like stage, I guess. Mm. I don't know if you have this issue as well, but yeah, just uh, everything you said, like just some people are just content where they are right now. And I mean, League doesn't really have a female scene per se, but like it's kind of an official. Uh, and I mean, 
it's easier to be on top of the female scene than being on the bottom of the regular yeah. scene because uh obviously like i'm not i'm not judging anything or or i mean anyone is just it's just true like you get i mean there's like few teams that pay salary like part time um yeah i've been fortunate enough to be in a full time one for two years and uh and then galaxy racers and yeah it's it's um it's comfortable you know like it's comfortable exactly it's yeah a com it's a comfort zone and this is the, like this is typical for a human being right you're in the comfort zone you already have some achievements in your life to the, what, what is more to achieve right you're already like getting money uh you're playing a decent level so mm. you, like, you have fans you have followers like what else mm. like you don't need to prove anything to anyone right? right but like this is what i'm saying that uh for some girls and i'm not, I'm not I'm, i know a lot of girls uh in the scene who's like whose only goal is to just win the female tournament and i saw this kind of examples right when uh players win teams win the female tournament and that's it they're like they don't care anymore you know like they they don't work as much as they work for winning this tournament anymore right they, they because they basically they achieve their goals but uh, like for me personally uh, I've won tournaments, right? And like, I want to win more tournaments, not only female tournaments, but like, as I said, like get it male tournaments, right? Like start, it's like start like moving this, you know, like laziness because like, fe I feel like female gaming is pretty lazy, you know, like because <laughs> okay. people, people, girls, they don't believe that they can do, they can achieve something bigger than winning a female tournament. This is why like, they just have this, um, limits you know like but i hope like i really hope this will be changed and uh, i really hope like my team uh, will be part of changing this uh, kind of mentality and like work ethic overall i hope so for you <laughs> thank you <laughs> laura um, uh, what is your challenge I'm not sure I understand the question 100%, like, as I, okay. that I faced or, no, uh, Okay, sorry. let's say, oh, I'm sorry, sorry. Yeah, no, I know go ahead. Uh, my, my connection is still bad, mm -hmm. but um, I think the question would be, if I would rephrase it, what is that one challenge that you're facing, or it's that one challenge that you think uh. about a lot? If you know you're a challenge away from your life, you will have a better uh, path for you to achieve your goals as an eSport e-athlete pro uh trying to think back um okay that may sound super cheesy yeah, but <laughs> uh it's kind of myself because i've had previously the chance of being full-time which uh in a full female scene uh team sorry which was pretty rare and is still pretty rare and but i've done cool thing with the team and overall it was like a nice experience but i kind of have like regrets of uh that i haven't done more in the team and personally um well it's kind of special because we had to stop the team because of uh covid but we're aiming to uh, start doing lands maybe or tournaments outside of female scene uh because everyone was like kind of motivated so that was great but as an individual i felt like i could have done better with what i had but i was always i guess i don't know blocking myself and i was always struggling with the fact that it was like it kind of sound like an excuse but at the same time it is like there is still something blocking me i don't know if that makes sense but it was really i guess all in my head uh yeah i think i think confidence was probably um uh the biggest thing for me i'd say lack of it and yeah i think that's about it i really like this answer sorry i really like this answer that uh, you're the challenge i agree with this 
I take I mean, everything yeah, back. I take my words back, honestly. Yeah. I'm, I'm the fucking reason. That was I deep. mean, all in all, I had every. That was deep. Yeah. Uh, I have every. I had every tool. We had a supportive team. I had. Uh, I, I had money to leave. Uh, I, I was like in the best environment, I guess, uh, or sort of. And I, I'm just like kind of mad at myself right now that I am where I am, and I. I I mean, it was still nice, but I could have done more. And I, I can't shake this feeling that I I should have done better with what was given to me as well. Because um, that was something pretty unique. And yeah. Oh, it's okay. Don't you oh. worry. <laughs> Everything that happens, happens for a reason to make us stronger. I hope so. <laughs> but it was good you're times. Strong. You're strong. You're strong. I mean, I mean there is a lot of courage and strength for a person just to be as vulnerable, to be so clear with his or her thoughts when it comes to the fact you said confidence and, and mental blockage and all of that. So I just want to say I, I, I saw big time thing. So I uh, mean, appreciate Same, you. same. Yeah, man. <laughs> appreciate you. And I appreciate you, Tanya, as well, for, you know, for telling me or telling us and telling every all the viewers here how challenging your life is you know when you have to work then you have to come back and you have to you know submit all you got and all your time to be a better player and sonia uh Sonia, i'm sorry oh. don't worry <laughs> it's like you know your honesty is very much appreciated and respected in the sense that you know you've been somewhere and now you're a different place but you still showcase the fact with honesty is that we still have challenges. I have a team that I need to make sure that we are all in the same mindset and putting more hours and thinking, are you doing enough or not? I think I and everybody else have learned so much, you know, and we really appreciate all that you said and all you showcased and all that you told us, right? So before we end this panel and this talk, any last words? Thank you. Well, thank you guys for for you know making this uh, tournament for all of us girl gamer uh like you're saving you're saving our you're like you're really saving our scene at least years ago like we barely have any tournaments nowadays in corona times and uh, uh thanks to you like the, we have another tournament unfortunately it's not on land in yeah. dubai <laughs> oh <sake>. yeah <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, th th really thank you for this, for, you know, supporting female scene and um, for making all these interviews, you know, for um, asking for other pe for other play per papers, papers, for other players, opinions, experiences, story lives, um, life stories, sorry. But yeah, really thank you for all of this. I'm really grateful. And um personally for me i want to say of course thank you to our organization galaxy racer for you know letting us uh, do this uh, as uh, like have it as our jobs and do it full time thank you thank you thank you for the hard work <laughs> thank you for following your dreams thank you for being you really appreciate Aww, it. stop it you <laughs> for continue <laughs> just kidding Tanya. Okay, good. Uh, that's all good. No, all I, positivity. I, <laughs> no, I fully agree. Um, but Xenia just said, like, really, really big shout out to you guys from Girl Gamer to make this possible because I feel like without you guys, um, I don't think a lot of girls would have the, the drive to, to compete, right? Because, like, I can even say it from, from my perspective, even my team, we, 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 um, train a lot just for girl gamer and we have this motivation and this drive to to win it all as well so a huge shout out to you guys and um especially uh, as well a shout out to my organization resolve for um contracting female players to give us the chance to like um uh, provide us with everything I need because, for example, we have our own sport psychologist in our organization um, who is trying to help us and a lot of great stuff. So yeah, thank you to you guys as well from Resolve. Woo! Yeah, well, <laughs> wow. <laughs> what can I say? Thank you. Seriously. Thank you for the amazing speech. <laughs> I mean, to me and the team as well. 
of grow up esports and grow game believe right now they're listening to this and they're like sure they're like their emotions all over death death well bless you and i'm sure great things are gonna be happening death there is no doubt about that for sure. I, hope so. i hope to win it all again <laughs> death and laura any last words um Oh, you've said all the best things already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, well, I've been to a few to Girl Gamers Festival, so and I always loved the staff. That was always taking really good care of the players and always making sure we're all uh, uh, comfortable and everything. So yeah, thank you for that as well. And new beliefs on female scene. Um, I like it for. The few times I've talked to management about it, about the their goal is the goal. I think, as I understood, is to uh, not have the female scene as a dead end, but more to push it towards regular scene, which I really appreciate because I, I don't think a lot of like a lot of people I think misunderstand that with female scene and see it as a dead end, but it should just be you know like. Yeah, another Growing, way, yeah. you know. And uh, do I have a last one? I don't have a team, so uh, and pick her. Thank up. you for myself. <laughs> pick her up, son. Please pick, pick her, her up. up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If any, Thank you. If all any all team need a support, you have <laughs> one right here. Yeah, thank yeah. you uh, girls as well uh, <laughs> everything was like so interesting and and i i don't have um a lot of chance to talk about uh, of this as well to girls from other games and and the fact that we have the same sort of experience and everything and uh yeah that's that was really interesting <laughs> yeah i agree thank you guys girls <laughs> <laughs> It was nice to well, see you and talk. Well, girls, you're all beautiful inside and out, mind, body, and soul. And all I can say, you're changing history. You're changing the esports scene. All those acts individually, everything you're doing right now, you're building a path for some like golden time. But I'm telling you right now, future generations will thank you for what you're doing right now, for holding on to this goals that you got and achieve. Even though they may sound individual uh, goals, but you're doing it for yourself, doing it for the future generations, doing it for the esports scene. So thank you, thank you so much, really. Thank you. You're amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. Woo! This talk has been deep, vulnerable, has been real, has been really real. That's why it's Girl Gamer Real Talks happening here. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your attention as this has been a real talk and we'll be seeing you next time with another girl girl, girl okay see i can't even express myself anymore i'm that high <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next time with another girl gamer talk see you next time bye bye bye, bye. bye. <laughs>